Good morning. Welcome to the Church of the Ascension on this, the third Sunday of Ordinary Time, Word of God Sunday. My name is Bridget Passour. Our celebrant for today's Mass is our pastor, Father Daniel, assisted by Deacon Tom. The Mass intention is for the deceased, David Nelson. We are blessed this morning to be joined both in person and with our online family. For those of you here, if you have not done so already, please silence your cell phones. We encourage you to go to our website or pick up a copy of the bulletin to see the many things that are happening here at our church. For the next three weekends, there will be signups for the Synod listening sessions. There's a table in the Commons. Please visit it after Mass and gain more information or sign up for the session. We do ask you to continue to pray that the Holy Spirit guide the Synod and our Church of the Ascension listening sessions. Do you wish to be baptized or to know more about your Catholic faith? We invite you to explore with us the faith topics that make up the Catholic tradition. This inquiry process is part of the rite of Christian initiation for adults, but is open to all adults who are seeking just to gain more knowledge about their faith. We will begin meeting next Sunday, January 30th at 10.30 a.m. in the library. Please see Janet Jones for more details. There are two off-site retreat opportunities happening in February. Both are being offered at St. Clair Retreat Center in Hampton. One is for married couples, the other is for women. Please see the bulletin for more details. Our homeless brothers and sisters will not be housed at Ascension in February due to the rise in COVID. They will, however, be housed in local hotels. Ascension still wants to help by providing meals during the week of February 9th through the 15th. In the coming week, there will be a table in the Commons to see how you can help. St. Gregory the Great School has their open house next Sunday, January 30th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Please call the school for more information. Now, if you will please rise to join in the prayer of the Holy Spirit. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, with you alone to guide us. Make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the path of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Friends, today we celebrate this third Sunday in ordinary time. 
We celebrate this Sunday also as we continue to share with the Universal Church to celebrate the Word of God Sunday. The Word of God nourishes us. The Word of God empowers our lives. The Word of God is the Spirit gives us life. Today, as we are gathered together, we continue to acknowledge that Jesus is the good news. Jesus empowers us. And wherever we proclaim the good news, Jesus also gives us strength and healing. Let us ask ourselves, do we really proclaim the word of God faithfully? Do we really transform our lives and share this word of God to our brothers and sisters? Our message today, we are missionary disciples. Let us continue to respond to the mission of Christ to proclaim the good news to the poor. Coming together as God's family, let us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's love and mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Please be seated. Friends, as I said in the beginning, that today we celebrate also 
the Word of God Sunday. You remember three years ago, Pope Francis invited us to come together at the third Sunday in January each year to celebrate the Word of God Sunday. What does it mean for us that the church wants us to recognize the presence of the Word of God, that the Word of God is Jesus himself? The Word of God is the good news. The Word of God brings us together. The Word of God brings us unity. And the Word of God is the Word of life, is the Word of spirit. Let us continue to be nourished with this Word of God to be empowered by the word of God and move forward with that fire to proclaim the good news. Brothers and sisters, we have come together to bless this time and to begin its sacred use, namely as the symbol of us all of the table of God's word that provides the first and necessary nourishment for our Christian life, let us take part in this celebration attentively, listening faithfully to God speaking to us so that his words may fully become for us a spirit in life. Let us pray. O oh God, you speak to us not as strangers, but as friends. In your goodness, grant us the grace of the Holy Spirit, so that in testing the sweetness of your word, we may be filled with the love of your Son that surpassed all knowledge. We ask thee through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now continue with our scripture readings. Do we have any children for Children's Liturgy of the Word? We do. I see some over there, too. Why don't you come forward? Dude, did you like playing in the snow? Isn't that nice? And it's nice and quiet. Yeah, it's a beautiful day out there. It got cold though, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it was nice for mom and dad to bring you here to church today. Yeah, there weren't very many cars outside, were there? Wow. Well, we thank everybody for gathering in this in mass. So you're going to be the only one going to the... Well, that's wonderful. Because guess who gets to carry the cross and the book? <laughs> is that going to be can you carry the cross for your dad sure you can tell you what I'm going to let you carry the cross and your dad's going to carry the book see he's going to carry the book for you so are you going to go on out thank you Bye. God bless you huh? we send you forth to hear the word of the Lord take these words to heart and walk in God A reading from the book of the prophet Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak till midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high 
answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is his excellency, and Ezra the priest scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad. Do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks, and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared. For today is holy to our Lord. Do not be sad in this day. For rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. First letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also is Christ. For in one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons. We were all given to drink of one spirit. Now, the body is not a single part, but many. You are Christ's body, and individually parts of it. The word of the Lord. Bring glad time. 
providing thanks to the poor. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings that you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. That's the message we have today, that God's words are spirit and life. Friends, God's ways are not our ways, and God's thoughts are not our thoughts. You can even imagine today No one planned that we'll be in this situation. But according to God's plan, we put ourselves in that situation. We accept what is going on, and we move forward in our journey of life. Today, in the first reading, we come to learn that the words of God is so powerful for our journey of life. It transforms our lives. It gives us life. It gives us strength. It brings us together. When I was reading this first reading at the time of Ezra, when he was reading that scroll, what kind of power he had to share with those people. I came to learn, first of all, the people of Israel They were coming back from from exile. They came back with all their wounds, with all their challenges in life. And they were now in the promised land. First of all, they were thankful because they were the ones who were brought back. And some of their family members, they died. And some of them, they had a lot of challenges in life. At that time, when they gathered together, the adults, the youngs, and the children who can understand the word of God, they started pondering in their journey of life. 
of kind of gift God has shared for us. So that was really the day for them, the day of restoration, the day which gives them life, brought them back to life. And that's why they were so attentively to listen to the word of God, to listen to that message because that message changes their lives completely. I started asking myself, how can I connect myself on the journey of this kind of message? Just go back at the time when we experienced the COVID-19. Remember those months where we have just closed ourselves, each one in his own homes, with our own family members. That was the time for us to acknowledge that God is present in our journey of life. And even at the time when we had the word of God, it brought us together as a family, listening of what God is telling us into our life. And that's the message we hear today, that God's words are spirit, in life. How do we ponder this power of the word of God? I remember when I was in the seminary, we used to talk ourselves when we used to see the priest who was coming to proclaim the good news, to give preaching. I remember we used to say, oh, the same priest, I don't know what he's going to tell us. Because we knew that maybe he was wrong, maybe he was giving us not the message we were expecting. Today's message we have that God's word is the words which transforms our lives. God's words is the words which always brings us good news. It's the good news of Christ. It's not the good news of the preacher. And that's why I want to challenge all of us when we are gathered together, hearing the word of God, the first thing to ponder in ourselves is to ask ourselves what Jesus wants us, wants me to tell today with this message. What kind of message Jesus wants me to hear today? And what kind of transformation of our lives God wants us today? It's not what the preacher is giving us his message, but what God wants me to hear today. Sometimes the word of God can touch our lives. And I remember one time someone say, oh, Every time it's the same message. The priest every time is talking about the same thing. But today I want to challenge all of you. Take your time to prepare yourselves. The word of God is the word of life. The word of God is the word which changes your lives. The word of God which brings you together. The word of God always empowers you to understand who you are. Open your hearts and see what the message of Christ is coming across you. And that's why in the gospel today, we hear Jesus, the way he was empowered with the spirit of the Lord. He came up with that message, the message that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me and he has sent me to proclaim the good news. Jesus reminds us that the Spirit of the Lord always empowers us, as he did for Jesus. Jesus also wants us to have that spirit to proclaim the good news, to bring all of our brothers and sisters with love and peace. Who are those people whom we are sent to proclaim the good news to the poor? Those poor people who can listen the word of God attentively, those people who can allow themselves to see the position of that word of God, which always heals their life. 
we are the ones who are here today and for those who are watching live streamers today. What is our message today? The message of Christ that God proclaimed the good news. Love one another and continue to proclaim the good news as he did himself. Remember, you cannot be accepted by everyone. And Jesus today reminds us, go and stay focused and let the spirits guide you. No matter what, be open and continue always to pray and ask the Lord to be guided by the presence of the word of God. The word of God will bring us together. And I would like to challenge all of you to continue to pray with our family members that the family which stays together prays together. Let us have a moment every day to pray the word of God with our family members. Let us also have the moment to prepare ourselves before we come for mass to go through with the word of God because you don't know what the spirit of God touches our lives. Don't come for mass without knowing what, is kind, what kind of message Jesus wants to tell you. As we continue to move together, we'll continue to be united. Today, I want to challenge all of you to acknowledge that the word of God is the word which gives us strength and healing. The word of God transforms us. Listen from the heart and walk through and proclaim the good news no matter what kind of environment you experience, but Jesus gives you that power to do it with love and peace. Amen. Amen. Please stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now present our burdens and joys to be lifted in prayer to our God. For the church, that we may continue to respond to the word of God, which is proclaimed in our midst and embraced in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That legislators and judges may be guided by sacred scripture to, to promote just laws and compassionate policies. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all those who proclaim the word of God, priests, deacons, lectors, cantors, catechists, and those assembled, that we may have the courage to bring the good news of salvation to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in need of prayer, especially those suffering from illness, may they be comforted by the healing words of the prophets and saints. We especially pray for those names of the chronically ill listed in our bulletin, and for those names we mention, we mention aloud now. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all who have died, that they may find eternal peace in your kingdom, especially Chris Harmeyer, sister-in-law of Deacon Gary Harmeyer, 
and our deceased mass, mass intentions for this weekend. Fidelis Oligario, Steve Genovese, David Nelson, and William McCann. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join in reciting the Ascension Parish and Rosary. Heavenly Father, Father we, we praise, praise and thank you for, for the past 50 years. years. Your grace, grace and spirit have enabled our parish to proclaim the word, celebrate the Eucharist, and to serve our local community. In thanksgiving, we pray for all those parishioners who set the parish foundation, and for all those who, throughout the years, have joined us in our mission, in our celebrations, or have sought our help. Please continue to pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, so that we will always be missionary disciples, who are joyful expressions of your Son within our parish and into our community. We boldly proclaim that Jesus is alive in our parish, welcoming the lost and leading us all to new life in him. We ask this through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, as one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. God of all goodness, we offer, you, we offer you these petitions, and we ask that you grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. The collection baskets are still not being passed around, and so they are located in the back as you leave the sanctuary. And once again, we thank you for your generosity. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, the sacrifice of the Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is fully right and just to adjourn our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your might works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with the thrones and the dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are clay. Holy, holy, holy Lord God. 
God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Indeed, Holy O Lord, and all you have created rightfully gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly employ you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will do to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we lie for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis of Pope and Bear, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember your servant David Nelson, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body 
after the parting of his glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope for, to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from evil, evil, Gracious grand peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious grant heart, peace, and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the sup of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Seated for a moment. Well, thank you for getting up early this morning and, and braving the potentially bad, bad roads, but uh, I don't know where you guys live, but it was a pretty clear sailing uh, for me up from Chesapeake. So uh, good to be here. Good to be with all of you. We have any visitors or guests that might have uh, also just wandered in here to stay warm and get out of the cold? We'd like to say hello. Do we have any visitors or guests? Would you stand? Tell us your name. Everybody's a local. Okay, good. Um, again, a couple announcements repeated. One uh, from the er earlier announcements about the retreats. Uh, there are two retreats coming up in February. The 12th, I think, is for the, the married couples retreat. And then uh, another February day, I forget which one, is women's. All of the details of those retreats are in the bulletin online and the um, parish website. Um, and one last item has to do with where we are uh, in this, this synod that we're, we're beginning right now. Um, this, again, is, is where the Pope has asked for feedback from the communities, the, the Catholic Church throughout the world. And so we're starting that process right now of gathering and putting together um, a report that's going to go to the 
go to all the, the, the uh, cardinals that are going to gather, bishops are going to gather at the end of next year um, and present this. This is where the church needs to go. What's going on? How's it doing? Where do we need to improve? What do we need to continue doing? Because it's working really well. For that, we need your input. And so uh, we're, over this time now, we're going to be gathering into groups, small groups of 10 or less. Uh, we'll be gather, you'll gather for a couple hours um, to talk about these exact same things, to bring up good, what's not so good, what you recommend. And so there's sign-ups for that. We're going to sign up for groups, uh, and it's located in the commons as you go out. Let me read the, the official thing here. As you heard in the announcements today and have been reading over the past few weeks, the church has embarked now on this, it's called the synod process. Synod means journeying together. Kind of like kalumba walu, kalumba halumbo. That's what I said, kalumba halumbo. <laughs> we walk together. <laughs> well, see, Pope Francis took a word from our, from our Tanzanian brothers. There you go. Um, Pope Francis has called all of us to participate in something that's truly historic. I liken this to the CEO of a company asking each and every employee to come to a meeting to talk about what's going on in the company. I encourage each of you to seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit and sign up after Mass for one of the many listening sessions that are being offered. That's what it's called, a listening session. Not that you should, you should listen as well, but you need to bring forth what your input is. Don't miss out on the privileged opportunity, again, to be an active participant in what is truly church history. This is, a, this is going to be, and potentially has the potential to be something that is as changing positively as the Second Vatican Council. For those of us that remember that huge, huge change that occurred. I think much, much for the positive, although... My parents and grandparents went, oh, it's not the church anymore. But it's now, it's this, it's wonderful. Father, how was your retreat? <laughs> cold? Yeah, it was cold, but uh, uh, just uh, to, to share with you the power of the word of God. I remember my mom when we started small Christian communities. And it was so difficult because she said, first of all, she cannot read. And she said, how am I going to read the Bible? Because I don't know how to read. So slowly, when we started saying that you'll be together with the community members and someone who is able to read can share the word of God's reading slowly, and all of you just listen and share what God has touched your lives each one in a unique way. From that time, I'm telling you, even this time when I go to visit my mom, the first thing before she go to bed, she asks my sister or my brother, can you read the Bible? Just the passage from the Bible, and just give her the moment to ponder and even to share something which it has touched for the whole day. This has given even me a grace that God gives in our special way. And I want to encourage all of you, have a moment, go through with the word of God, and which is very important if you share with your family members. Just read slowly, just a small passage, and just ask yourself what Jesus wants me from this message. And each one is unique. And you'll wonder that everyone will be touched in a different way. Let us do it, because that is where we can learn the power of the word of God. The power of the word of God, the way it nourishes us. And the power of the word of God that brings us together with the unity. We are the mystical body of Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ending. We go now to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks be to God. Lift up your hearts to the Lord. 
with God's gracious mercy. Sing out your joy to the Lord, whose love is enduring. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Praise the name above all men. 